Hello and welcome to My Secret Math Tutor. Today for statistics, we'll be talking about an interesting topic. We'll be talking about the levels of measurement. And if you've never heard about the levels of measurement before, let me describe kind of what they do. Uh, the levels of measurement are used to classify the data that we actually collect. So of course, we're gonna go out there, we're gonna collect all kinds of great data. We can take it and all of a sudden break it into lots of different groups. Uh, the four basic groups that we have for our data is we have the nominal level of measurement, we have the ordinal, the interval, and the ratio level of measurement. Uh, again, these are all different types of data that we will collect, and we'll explain a little bit more about what each of these mean. Now, each of these different levels have different criteria on whether the, the data is measured at that level or not. And look closely at the characteristics that the data has. At the first level, the nominal level, we're looking at data like names, labels, categories, uh, stuff like that. At the next level, the ordinal level, now we have data that can be ordered. So it's a little bit more special. Uh, you can actually say, okay, here's the, the lower ones or the greater ones, but there is some order to them. Interval level takes that one step further. You can not only order the data, but you can take differences in the data and it actually means something. Uh, we'll get into a little bit more about what I mean by differences, but I'm saying like if I take two different data values and I subtract them, then the difference in those values, you know, means something. It's not just arbitrary. And the last of these levels, the ratio level, this is data that you can order. Uh, the difference between two values is meaningful and the zero actually corresponds to none of the value. Now, when really going through these levels, it's often handy to ask yourself uh, some specific questions to see where it might fall. And here are those questions, okay? So when just looking at some data, the very first thing you wanna ask is, can I order the data in a meaningful way? And you can either say yes or no. If you can't order the data, then you simply say it is nominal and you move on. Uh, if you can order the data, then you wanna ask, well, can I subtract two different data values and is that difference meaningful? And if it's not, then we say, oh, okay, it's ordinal, differences don't matter, but at least it can be ordered. Now, if, uh, if the data can be ordered, if differences are meaningful, then you wanna ask, does zero correspond to none of the value? Uh, if you say no, then you can say interval. If you can say yes, then you say ratio. Now, I got a bunch of different examples and I'll, I'll basically walk through these questions so you can see exactly what I mean by is it ordered, are differences meaningful, and uh, does zero correspond to none of the value? And you'll see it's not as bad as, as it looks. So here are some different situations of some data that I might be out there uh, going to collect. And for the first of these, uh, I'm collecting movie ratings, and all of the movies are, are being put on this four-star scale. So some movies are one star, some movies are really great, they're at four stars. Uh, but every movie has a four-star rating with it that I'm collecting. Now, uh, the very first thing that I want to know is, you know, can I order my data? And for this one, the answer is yes. You know, I can have all of my one-star movies, followed by all of my two-star movies, all of my three-star movies, and all of my four-star movies. And uh, really in that order, you know, that really signifies maybe my bad movies and my good movies. So an order in this sense matters. Okay, now we go a little bit further. Uh, if I take just two, uh, say, movies and I subtract their values, does the difference in that value make any sense? So here's a good example. Let's take my two-star movie and let's take my one-star movie. And of course, it only has one additional star. So, you know, what's that mean? in terms of how much better of a movie it is. Uh, maybe another way of looking at it is, if I look at my two-star movie and my one-star movie, does that mean my two-star movie is twice as good as a one-star movie? And of course the answer there is, is no. You know, I know it's better, because it's got two stars, but I can't really quantify how much better it is. So at that point we kind of stop and we say, okay, yeah, I know what this thing is. The, this is ordinal, or, or this is data at the ordinal level of measurement. So again, you can order them, but the differences really don't make a lot of sense. All right, move on to the next one. Year uh, that people were born. So I'm gathering up people's uh, birth years. All right, starting off at the top, can I order the data? And of course the answer is yes. You can have people 
uh, born in earlier years. You're going to have people born in later years. And I can definitely order people by their years. If I take differences in those years, does that make sense? So if someone was born in 1990 versus 1980, you know, is that difference of 10 years meaningful? And in this instance, again, we can say yes, you know, that makes the person uh, 10 years older. So, you know, that's some good information. Uh, and one last question with this guy, since we can continue on, uh, does zero correspond to none of the value? Now, this is that one spot where it finally, you know, actually doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. Uh, if I actually had a person on the, on the list who was born in the year zero, what does that really mean? Does, do they have no years born or something? Does that correspond to none of the value? And the answer is no, you know. Um, and, and we could even go, you know, have, have people born uh, in, like, say, 1000 BC. And so that zero is, you know, is a placeholder, but it doesn't correspond to none of the value. So let's see, we can order it. Uh, differences are meaningful, so we will call this at the interval level. All right, moving on. Eye color. Okay, this, maybe this is some data I'm collecting. Collecting all kinds of people's eye color. They could be blue, brown, maybe hazel. Uh, starting off with the first question, can we order this? Well, unfortunately, that first question we go to ask, the answer is no. You know, it doesn't matter if I put brown eyes first followed by blue eyes, or if I decide to put the hazel eyes first, you know, none of those orderings really matter. So this is just data that uh, consists of labels, categories, names. So we will say it is at the nominal level. All right, moving on. The amount of rainfall in centimeters. Okay, can we order this? Okay, maybe I'm measuring rain on different days. Uh, the answer is yes, you know, I can see the days that have less rainfall and the days that have more rainfall as soon as I start lining them up, so order matters. If I take differences in their values, does that mean something? So if it rained 20 inches on one day and 10 inches on another day, does that mean it rained twice as much on the 20 inch day? And of course the answer is yes, you know, those differences make, uh, are meaningful. Okay, one last one is zero, does that correspond to none of the value. So if I have no rainfall in, on one of the days, then of course they didn't get any rain. And, and that's great. That means that I can finally classify this at the ratio level. So there's lots of criteria that goes in getting all the way down to that ratio level. And you really do have to ask all of those questions. All right, I have four more examples. If you want to try these out on your own, go ahead and pause the video really quick. See if you can figure out uh, whether shoe length or temperature measured in Celsius, uh, fat level of some cookies, or the brand of a cell phone. See if you can figure out what category those are in. All right, I'm going to go through these one at a time. We'll see what we get. So I'm measuring shoe length in inches, trying to figure out how long people's shoes are. Uh, and firstly, can it be ordered? The answer is yes. I got smaller shoes, larger shoes. They, they have an order to them. Uh, second question, um, can I take differences in shoe lengths and does that matter? Does that uh, have meaning to it? And of course, if somebody is wearing a size uh, 30 inch shoe versus someone who's wearing a size 10 inch shoe, then that shoe is going to be three times larger. You know, taking difference in those makes a difference. All right. Uh, does zero, does that correspond to none of the value? So if I, for some reason, have a, a, a shoe length of zero, you know, what does that mean? It means that, well, there's absolutely no shoe length. There's no shoe, maybe, you know. And so I will go ahead and put this at the ratio level, that it, it means something if there's a, a zero uh, shoe length. All right, let's move on. Temperature measured in Celsius. This can definitely be ordered. I have my colder days, my warmer days. That makes sense. Uh, differences in temperature make a difference. You know, if I see a temperature at uh, 50 degrees, I see another temperature at 30 degrees, it's gone up by 20 degrees and that means something. Okay, so differences matter. Uh, is zero, does that correspond to none of the value? Okay, this one, uh, that, doesn't, that doesn't make sense. I can have a temperature of zero degrees, uh, but does that mean that there's no temperature? And the answer is, you know, no, that doesn't make any sense. Uh, I could even go into negative temperatures on the Celsius scale. Zero in that instance just corresponds to where uh, water is going to freeze, but it doesn't mean I have a lack of temperature, which is what I'm actually measuring. Uh, so I'll go ahead and put this at the 
interval level. All right, moving on. Okay, so I have a bunch of cookies in, uh, in front of me. I'm, I'm measuring these as either low-fat cookies, medium-fat cookies, or high-fat cookies loaded with butter. Uh, so, you know, uh, can I put these into a type of an order? And the answer is yes. I can have my low-fat cookies, medium-fat cookies, and high-fat cookies. There is an order there. Uh, do differences in order matter? So if I have a, a medium-fat cookie and a low-fat cookie, can I say precisely you know, how much more fat it has in there? Not if I'm only using these things as my uh, measurement, as just medium and low. You know, what's, what's the difference between those two? Is it 2 grams of fat or is it 20 grams of fat? I have no idea. Uh, so differences aren't really meaningful. Don't make a lot of sense. Or don't know. They have an order, but can't really go beyond that. All right, one last one. Uh, I'm trying to figure out what brand of cell phone people have, so I, I ask a whole bunch of people and see what they got. Uh, with this one, you know, does the order matter? And of course, as soon as we ask that question, the answer is no. Um, it doesn't really matter how I order all these different brands. It doesn't even make sense to put them into an order. So this is nominal data. All right, so you can see that these levels of measurements really help us classify the type of data we are collecting. And if you ask those three simple questions, then you can easily drop it into one of these categories without too much problems. If you'd like to see some more videos, please visit mysecretmathtutor.com.